after having tested the Geekom AS6 mini PC, the main thing that stood out to me was the amazing graphics. We have RDNA 2 technology and in Shadow of the Tomb Raider, this is the first mini PC that achieves over 60 FPS at 1080p. And here I have a graph comparing Firestrike against all the other mini PCs we tested. And in terms of graphics, this one takes the lead. At the front of the machine, it says powered by Asus and I found the build quality also to be very good. There's lots to talk about, so let's get started. Let's have a look what's inside the box. We have the mini PC and then there's some paperwork that explains you know, all the features and how to install the machine at the back of a monitor with a VESA mount. Here is the VESA mounting bracket, by the way. Also in the box are quite a lot of screws. These are for the VESA mount, but also for upgrading storage. There's a second NVMe slot inside and you can also install a two and a half inch SATA drive. We get a HDMI cable and of course a power supply. And this one is quite powerful. It has a rating of 150 watts. Let's have a look at the front of the unit. We have heaps of ports starting on the left. This is the storage activity LED headset port. So this is a TRRS connector for headphones and microphone. USB 4, this one has a lot going on. Firstly, 40 gigabits per second of transfer rate. It can do display. 8K60 and also deliver 15 watts of power. We have two USB 3 ports. These can do five gigabits. Power button with a white LED. More ports at the back of the machine. Two HDMI ports. These can do 4K60. We have a display port. This one is specified for 5K60. We have three USB ports. All of these are five gigabits per second. Another USB 4 port, 40 gigabits, 8K60 at 15 watts of power. This is a 2.5 gigabit per second ethernet port. The chip is from Realtek and here goes the power supply. Wi-Fi performance was excellent. We're getting over 100 megabyte per second to my NAS. So this is megabytes per second, not megabit. Now you need a good Wi-Fi router. I'm using a Xiaomi AX6000. You can't compare such a router with the one you get from your ISP like Aussie Broadband or Superloop. They are quite average. So you need a decent Wi-Fi router. And I've also adjusted the antennas to get good signal reception upstairs where I'm testing. So keep that in mind. You might not get as much performance as I do. It all depends on your house, how the walls are built, what sort of router you have. And yeah, sometimes even what your neighbor is up to as well. There are different configurations of this machine. We have the one with the Ryzen 9, 6900HX with eight cores and 16 threads. It is from the Zen 3 Plus micro architecture. And with that, we get a few upgrades like DDR5, we get PCI Express 4, USB 4, AV1 decoding, and also Wi-Fi 6E. To open the machine, there are four screws at the bottom, and then you have to carefully lift the machine apart, but do be gentle. There's a big ribbon cable connect connecting these two parts and you don't wanna break it. Here we have a look at the memory. So 32 gigabytes of RAM in total. We have two 16 gigabyte modules. These are DDR5 with 4,800 megahertz. And I believe the machine is upgradable. Not sure what the maximum limit is. I would say 64 gigabyte will definitely work. With the storage, here we have the NVMe. It is a Kingston SNV2. Unfortunately, this is quite a budget SSD and really the only main weakness that I found in this mini PC, especially the right performance, is really not up to spec. So I guess they just had to cut some corners here to keep the price low. But there was a surprise. There's a second NVMe slot in the machine, so you can upgrade the storage, keep the existing SSD, maybe 
to have your documents sitting on there and get a faster one for your main storage because this computer supports PCI Express 4 so you really want to have some fast storage in this one. There's also a two and a half inch SATA drive bay where you can install a mechanical hard drive or a SSD to have even more storage. We have Windows 11 Pro pre-installed and fully activated. I then connect to the Wi-Fi and do all the Windows updates. The version of Windows 11 was a little bit older. It downloaded a heap of updates and that actually took several hours. So maybe in the future that can be improved by shipping a more up-to-date Windows image. After Windows updates, very important, download the latest Radeon graphics drivers and the chipset drivers because that will give you extra performance. And for the benchmarking, I also went into the power profile and set everything to high performance. Let's run some CPU benchmarks, starting with Cinebench R15, 2028 for the multi and 249 for the single core test in Cinebench R20, 4742 for the multi and 595 for the single. And in Cinebench R23, we're getting 11,256 for the multi and 1,543 for the single. And here we have a graph comparing all the Cinebench R23 multi-core tests. So the machine is quite competitive. It does fall short of some of the higher end Intel processors. And if we look at the single core performance, here we can see the same thing. I would say multi-core performance is excellent, but with the single core performance, Intel, the current generation of Intel CPUs is a little bit stronger. Here we have Cinebench running in the background. This is R23 with all cores loaded. And initially the machine will boost quite high, but then the temperatures will hit the 90s and the machine will then start to slow things down. And after that initial burst, it settles for around 3.7 gigahertz on all the cores. With a power meter, I saw 53 watts at the wall and the temperatures in the 70s. So it has a bit of peak burst performance integrated initially, but when you're running the machine for a longer period of time, it will slow down a little bit. I ran the same test, but with stressing a single core and I could see that after 10 minutes or so, the single core would run at 4.7 gigahertz, so that's quite high. Temperatures again in the 70s, and the power meter showed me 34 watts for the entire machine. Let's talk about the fan speed and the noise. You will definitely be able to hear this machine. It is quite powerful. I mean, 50 watts while running CPU intense tasks, yeah, that has to be cooled somehow. There is a BIOS option with a Q-Fan control that you can toggle on and off. If you turn off Q-Fan, it will run at 4000 RPM and the machine will be quite noisy. With Q-Fan on, you have a choice between quiet mode and performance mode. So yeah, quiet, mo quiet mode basically sacrifices a little bit of performance for a quieter noise profile. But all in all, the machine is not hugely loud, but you will definitely be able to hear it especially when you're doing gaming or anything intensive with the CPU. 3D graphics performance is where this machine really shines. CloudGate 32,152 in Skydiver 22,128 in Night Raid we're getting 24,940 and in Firestrike 6,461. And here we have a graph with all the Firestrike results from all the mini PCs I've tested so far, and with 6,461, the Geekom is way ahead of the other mini PCs. So let's see what this graphics performance can do in games. One of the first games I like testing is Dirt 3. We're running a 1080p, and initially I started with the high details, but I found the performance to be excellent with well over 100 FPS. So I switched the details to ultra, and even with ultra details, we're getting around 100 FPS. This is amazing. Most mini PCs I've tested in the past, when you set this game to ultra, it will struggle to reach 60 FPS. Strange Brigade was also not an issue for this machine. 
we're running at 1080p with low details using the Vulkan API. And again, we're getting over 60 FPS. Again, this is a performance I have not seen on any machines before. So here the RDNA 2 architecture as well as the DDR5 memory really uh, come into play. Shadow of the Tomb Raider, also 1080p with the lowest details configured in the preset. And again, we're getting over 60 FPS and that's without any upscaling technology that you can play around with. And yeah, you get AMD drivers, much more stable and compatible with games, also older games compared to some of the Intel based mini PCs. So not a bad mini PC, but can it run Crisis? Here we have Crisis running, of course, at 1080p with very high details. That's the highest you can configure in the game. This is the DirectX 10 render path, the 64-bit version. You can get this game on GOG and yes, it runs smooth. Now, Crisis is known to be quite unoptimized. So every now and then there will be stutters and hiccups and pauses, but that's quite normal. You will get that on most machines. Um, but yeah, it's silky smooth. Now, for some reason, MSI Afterburner has stopped working in Crisis <laughs> since, I don't know, the last few versions, or I'm not sure what's going on there, but uh, if you're familiar with gaming, you can tell that this game runs smooth. So now let's talk about the pricing, cause that's really what matters in the end. You're looking at 749 US dollars. This is for the top version with the Ryzen 9 the 6900HX with 32 gigabytes of RAM and a one terabyte storage. Now, there might be a discount coupon as well. Have a look in the video description and in, if anything changes with the pricing, also have a look there. So, what are my thoughts? There's a lot to like. Really, in terms of negatives, there's really the storage. That's the main thing that stood out for a machine with PCI Express 4. Uh, pick a better SSD, you will get much, much better performance out of this machine. But maybe they had to cut some corners to hit the budget. Everything else is fantastic, yeah. The CPU is very strong. We get excellent multi-core performance and single-threaded performance is also not too shabby. A little bit behind some of the high-end Intel machines, but not too much. And the real highlight is, of course, the graphics, RDNA 2 technology. We're getting excellent drivers from AMD and DDR5 memory. And you've seen the benchmarks for gaming 3D performance. This mini PC is fantastic. And the build quality, Asus, yeah, I found that really impressive. Well, really well put together, easy to upgrade as well. And all the ports checked out. A couple of aspects I wasn't able to test because I don't have, for example, a 8K monitor or a USB for device, but I have a 4K 60 monitor and that checked out fine. And I don't think there will be any surprises here. I do like that you can install a second NVMe and also a two and a half inch SATA drive. So there's some upgradability as well. So all in all, the Geekom AS6 gets the thumbs up. The graphics are absolutely amazing and I like everything else about it as well, apart from the storage. And now I wanna hear from you. What do you think about this mini PC? Share your feedback down below in the video description. And that's it for this video, guys. Thank you so much for watching and I shall see you soon with another one.